Okay. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Today it is Tuesday, December 15th. So, um, just a couple of announcements for you guys. Connect groups. If you guys are not connected to any connect groups, there are some amazing ladies here on this call who do have connect groups. Um, on Tuesdays, Myra has uh, her connect groups, and then on Wednesdays, um, Stella has her connect groups. Um, they meet in person every other day, and then um, every other they meet every other week, and then and then on Zoom. Uh, and then Jen Navarrete and Maricela have their connect groups uh, in person as well. So if you would like to get connected, um, please go ahead uh, and uh, message them and they'll be happy um, to connect you. They'll be happy to get you guys connected. Um, and then uh, cold and flu season. Cold and flu season is coming up. You got is coming up. It is here. So um so make sure to um stay healthy take your vitamins drink water um or teas and um exercise try and you know move around and stay fit uh with cold and flu season here you know don't we're uh don't get it mixed taken with covid um but just keep yourself healthy keep moving and um uh, just you know healthy 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 and then um a couple housekeeping um a couple housekeeping notes um um so um please honor our speaker of the day we uh encourage all of you guys to pray um and um we ask that uh no prophetic word um on this call if you do have a, a word for someone please feel free to reach out to them privately and uh go ahead and give them that word and then um we ask um that you guys will also put yourself on mute um please and then um we will open up the discuss we'll open up after um the speaker is done for discussion for everyone to give time to talk um and then save the dates. We have Freedom Night coming up February 5th. So if you um, have not attended Freedom Night, it just like it is in the title, Freedom Night is an amazing night to be set free from everything and anything. Freedom Night is, an, is amazing. And um, if you haven't gone, please go uh, save the date February 5th. It will be at CFT and Chandler. And then encounters. Encounters are coming up. Men and uh, women encounters. So, so if you haven't gone to an encounter, I highly encourage you guys to go to encounter. Encounters are amazing, amazing, amazing. And let me just say, you leave encounter changed. Uh, so if you uh, so be on the lookout for encounters for the dates for those and we will um, let you know as it gets closer. So today, uh, like I said, it is Tuesday, December 15th and I am happy to introduce the speaker for today. I uh, am loving the series uh, this week mm -hmm. as it just started and I cannot wait to hear, um, cannot wait to hear what she has to say. Um, I love every time she speaks. I love when all the leaders speak, okay? And, but I love it, you know, and um, she, you know, I love, I love her heart. And so today's speaker is Jen. Go ahead, Jen. Thank you, Sonia. You are amazing. Um, I just love, love, love that, you know, you're always willing and you're always there. And I just love you. Thank you so much for that introduction. Uh, we're going to start with prayer, you guys. Um, so, Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for every single woman that's here. Father, those that are coming, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you open up our hearts, Lord, that we will receive the word that you have for us today, Lord, that you would use me as that vessel, Father, that the words that come out of my mouth are your words and not my own, Lord. And I come against any spirit of division, any spirit of um, anger, any spirit um of confusion right now in the name of jesus um it is in your name we pray amen all right so today we are going to be talking about selfless extravagant giving 
Um, and the funny thing was that, you know, when I started, you know, studying for the lesson, I was like, selfless, you know, that's, that's an interesting word to be selfless. Because um, as, as I was going through the lesson, it explained, we're born um, selfish, you guys, like, there's, there's scientific evidence that we are born selfish. And that ties up into us being born into sin right? Because Jesus was selfless. He did everything for us, but we don't. We do everything for us. And if you want scientific evidence, you guys, I will let you borrow my two-year-old and she can walk into your house and grab anything there and just say, mine, mine. She doesn't care that she didn't pay for it. She doesn't care that it belongs to anybody else. She likes it. She will say it to hers, right? So that's all the proof that you need. I did. I never took her into any place and say, hey, this is what you're going to do. You're going to go to Sonia's house. You're going to take her teddy bear. You're going to tell her it's yours, right? Those are not lessons that we teach. That's just the way that we are born. We're born that way. Um, and and it's, it's funny for a two-year-old, but, you know, in real life, like, we're all um selfish we are we are selfish and we think like we want that instant gratification we want that we live in that microwave society right um amazon prime like i wanted delivered an hour ago like it was in my mind amazon should have already known like it should be knocking on my door like we live in that society you say something right you're like hey i'm looking at maybe a new mirror and then all of a sudden Facebook starts showing you all the deals of mirrors that are happening around the area, right? You're like, that's exactly, wow, you knew what I needed, right? So we live in that society that it's like, absolutely, you need a day off. Absolutely, you need more. Absolutely, you deserve more outfits. Like, come on, like you need to push your closet all the way back and you need to put more stuff in there, you know? And, and yeah, you don't need to get rid of that stuff. You've had it for 12 years waiting for your high school weight to come back, but you don't need to get, you need more, you need more, right? And we start accumulating more and more and more. That's kind of um, the place where we live. We just want more things, more things, more stuff. And when it comes to giving, we are very we go into thinking mode, right? We start analyzing when it goes into giving, we start analyzing. We start like, well, can I, can I afford to give? Can I afford this? Can I, is this the right time? When God is calling us to give and we start questioning, like, is it right? Should I, maybe it's not really God telling me to give. Maybe it's not really God. Maybe it's just me, right? We start questioning these things because they go against our original ways of being selfish. It's about me. Um, how many people have, I've seen so many people right now um, giving out um, raffles and being generous because it's Christmas. And how many people do you see on Facebook that are saying, I wish I could get a car. Like that person just won a car. You know, I, I saw a couple of ministries over the weekend that were giving away things to um, people that go to their church. And you're like, man, I want to go to that church. Or man, I want to be the person that receives, you know, someone got a house. Like I want to be blessed with a house. Um, and you, you immediately turn it about you, right? Immediately, man, someone got $200,000 in debt, like paid for, like I have debt. Like I want my debt paid for, like, man, they're so lucky. Right. And we start like immediately switching the role into where I want to be because I want to get it. Like I want to be blessed. And how many times do we say, I want to be that person that gives a car to single moms so that they can get to work. Like, I want to be the person that blesses um, that homeless community this year. And not just for Christmas, but you know what? Like, I'm going to make it a point to help one person get out of homelessness. I'm going to make it a point to um, bless somebody, right? We tend to get to this place where immediately we go into, I want to be the one blessed. I want to be the one to receive it not into I want to be the one that God uses to bless people because that is hard it's really hard especially um when you are in a position 
where you're, you feel like you don't have enough yet. You know, you're like, when I make six figures at that point, I will donate. You know, when I make 250,000 a year, like I know it's going to happen. Um, then I will donate. Right. So you're waiting, you're in a position of waiting until you get to a place that you can be more generous. Right. So the funny thing is that there are three types of mindsets when it comes to finances. And I'm gonna go over, um, so um, I'm gonna go over the three of them, right? So God calls us to be extravagant in generosity. So if we look at Proverbs 21, 26, I'm gonna pull that up for you guys. Some people are always greedy for more, but the godly love to give. Um, and you know what? The good news is that women are more generous than men. Women like to give um, more so than men because of a way that we've been wired. So it's easier for women to give than, to, than men is, right? Not, not every case scenario, but generally, right? Um, so because we are more of the protectors, you know, the ones that we, 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 we want to take care of people. We want to take care of our family um, for that reason, but not as extravagant as God wants us to be, right? We're not there yet. So the righteous gives without holding back like Jesus gave to us, right? So we want to be um, righteous. So mindset number one is the bag mindset. And what is a bag mindset? So we have this mindset where we accumulate things in a bag, but we don't realize that our bag has holes, right? So as much as we start putting inside this bag, it's coming out from the bottom. So there's never enough. So is that there is not enough mindset. So we deal with uh. Jen, we kind of lost you for a sec. You're frozen. I'm still frozen on my end. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Oh. 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 Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh, I see you. I see you. Okay. So Jesus, we just ask that um, right now, Father God, that. Um, you come against anything that intercedes, Father God, or that is trying to um, come against this message, Father God, and that we receive it the way that you want us to when we pray this in your name, Jesus. All right, so we are going to be generous. <laughs> We're going to talk about that today. I don't know what's happening, you guys, but um, God's in control. So um, the mindset that this is the mindset that I grew up with, um, the lack mindset, right? There's not enough. We don't have enough. And we, if we had enough, we would be more generous, but we don't have enough, right? So transitioning that mindset of the not enough into the mindset um, that we want to have. So um, what does that say? So in, um, let me go ahead and read this scripture to you guys. It's, um, Haggai 1, 6, you have planted much, but harvest little. You eat, but you're not satisfied. You drink, but you're still thirsty. You put on clothes, but you cannot keep warm. Your wages disappear as though you were putting them in pockets filled with holes. So we're doing these things. We're gathering and our bags have holes. Like he's talking about, that's um, Haggai 1 verse six so we're gathering and it's falling right we keep putting and putting and putting and we're working and we're doing all these things but we are in that selfish mode like i need to have enough and i need to feel safe and i need to have my safety blanket before i can be generous to people before i can give right so that's that kind of mindset and that's the kind of mindset that um Uh, so this is the kind of mindset that Judah had, right? Uh, when the woman that came, um, which, you know, the woman that came and poured the perfume into Jesus' feet, he was like, whoa, 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 whoa. That is some expensive perfume. You could feel the poor with that perfume, right? And the woman did it because 
God had done something in her life that she wasn't concerned about having that safety blanket because she had what she needed. She, she recognized the spirit of God. She recognized who Jesus was. And, and when you see Jesus, you want to honor him with everything that you have and your best, right? But Judah's mindset was the bag. Well, we could give more to the poor. Well, funny thing you think of that, Judah, because you were in charge of the bag and you were taken out of that bag and it was never enough. The same person that turned around and, and, and turn in, um, ends up betraying Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, right? That same person was thinking, no, no, no. This is extravagant. This is an expensive perfume that you can use. And, and, and you know what? We realized that. If you see someone else with more, you start thinking, man, they should donate more. You start saying, like, if I was in that person's position, this is what I would do. See, if I made money like that, or if I had that kind of job, this is what I would do. We start thinking of how we can manage other people's money, other people's success, other people's things. But we don't realize that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much. It matters how we honor God, right? She did it with a perfume because that was the best that she can give him and are we giving god the best of us in every area you guys generously giving him our time generously giving him our finances generously trusting in him and giving it to his people right so that's the bag mindset you guys that i work on myself to retrain that i don't have enough mindset that i need to be on the safe side mindset that i need to um, you know, take care of me. Right. And I'm going to share something. I'm going to be really transparent and really honest here. You guys, I've been battling with this to share it or not. So, um, I knew the moment that it was a battle that I had to share it. So Lord, I just pray it comes out the right way. Um, so this past week was a really hard week for me. Um, I was dealing with DCS. I was dealing with a whole lot of things that were very heavy. And I started feeling um, really tired and I started feeling overwhelmed and I started feeling like, gosh, I got to fix everyone's problems. And here I go again, back into this routine, right? And I got to have this and I got to do that. And then there was an issue with our finance. There was an issue with our bank. There was an issue with all, like, I mean, honestly, and I started and I woke up one of these days, I woke up and now I just woke up angry. I woke up angry and I was like, I'm skipping my devotional today because I have so much to do. I have so much to do. And as I was thinking, like, I have so, I just had this anger and everything you guys can think of that, of course, you know, you're like, man, I'm just having one of those days and it would just happen and happen and happen. And I was like, what is going on today? Um, I'm on hold for three hours on a call. I'm doing these things and I go to the groceries and I'm doing groceries. And then of course I get the bad cart and I'm like, of course I'm pushing the bad cart. Now I already have stuff in it. Now I got to hurry up and get back because I have a meeting and all these things. And when I get done paying, I have a thing of bread um, on the top. The thing flies open, falls in the parking lot. And I was just like, one of those days, right? And I was like, come on, like, why? And I'm just angry. Like, I could have turned this around immediately and be like, laugh it off, whatever. No, I was angry. I get home and I'm like, oh, oh, putting stuff away and I'm like throwing things down. And I'm like, ah, you know, just in an angry mode, right? And I was like, I need to go pray because I know where that anger is coming from. I'm like, I'm so angry. I can't pray right now, right? So, again, going fully transparent, right? So I didn't want to pray. I went for a walk and I was just like, I'm, I was so angry. I was crying. Okay. And as I'm on this walk and I'm crying, I'm like, I don't want to be angry. I don't want to be angry. I don't want to go through this, but I was, and I couldn't shake it off. And I realized that the, that night I realized that my problem was I shifted my focus from Jesus to me. I had to figure out these problems. I needed to solve these problems. And as much as I'm like, I trust God with my finances, this week I was like, this is due and this is due and our bank messed up. And now we have like, this is going to be a mess. This is a mess because someone else dropped the ball and I have to pay the price. And I'm like, I know God's got me. And you know what, you guys, I heard a voice that said, God's got you anyways, you don't need to pray. And I was like, that's right. He's got me. I don't need to pray. I'm so angry right now. 
he's going to take control. I'm just going to let go. And I'm just going to continue to take this anger and continue to um, figure things out myself. You guys, that didn't go well at all. Like at all. I kept running into walls back and forth and I couldn't understand it. But when I realized, I was like, my focus shifted from God's in control to I am in control. And the most important part, you guys, that I took out of that terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day was that um, I, I, I heard a voice tell me, don't pray because God's already got it. And I was like, that's right. He does. And I was like, D -d -d what, what, what was that? That's not me. And that's not God. But it took me a whole day to realize that. And, and, you know, so just so you guys are aware, like, that's like, it's real, right? The enemy doesn't want us to see that I wasn't putting God first, that I was like, in my mind, the putting God first shifted into he's got it anyways, right? So, but not out of faith, it was just not me and not God. And it was keeping me from going to God to pray so that this would come about. Right. And once I took the time and I was like, okay, God, this is more than I can handle. Like I need to get some clarity and God showed me. Right. So that's, um, that's because again, I was in that bag mindset that I needed to put it in the bag because I knew that what was going to happen, it was going to be a mess and all that stuff. Right. So the mindset that we, the second mindset that we're going to talk about, you guys, um, is the basket mindset. And the basket mindset, um, we're going to speak about, dear, um, dear, dear or not, you guys, I could never say this. Myra will laugh. Ma Maria, say it for me, please. <laughs> I know you know. Deuteronomy? Yes. I can't say that. I just can't say it. <laughs> Jesus knows. Okay. So um, what Maria said, 28, 2, uh, 2, 3, uh, 2 to 5, sorry. So you will, you will experience all these blessings if you obey the Lord your God. Your, your toes, your towns and your fields will be blessed. Your children and your crops, your crops will be blessed. The offsprings of your herd and flock will be blessed. And your fruit baskets will be, um, and breadboards will be blessed. So he's talking about our baskets will be blessed, right? So I'm going to give you guys an example. Have you guys ever gone to get an IC like at 7-Eleven or what are they here? Um, AM, PMs, right? When you get an IC and you realize and you start, you get the machine and you're going to swirl it, right? And then you get to the top and then you shake it to the bottom. So it all the air goes out and then you can fill more and then you stop and then you put the lid and then you pour some more and you're like, I'm, I'm going to make the most out of these 99 cents, right? Like I'm going to fill it up to the top, even if it overflows a little, right? So um, that's what God is talking about within the basket. When we give God, when we are generous and he tells us in Luke 6, give and you will receive your gift will return to you full press so in full press down, shaken together, make room for more, running over, poured into your lap. The amount you will, you will give determines the amount you get back. So um, he's telling us that that's what he wants us to do, right? That's what he wants us to have. But um, what does it look like? What does that look like, right? That, that means that we have to trust God. So when Jesus was telling that story, people understood because back then, that's how a lot of people um, got fed, right? They, they would push it down. So let me go ahead and read that over again. So it says, press down, shaken together, make room for more, running over, poured into your lap, right? That's the kind of... Um, that's the kind of mindset I want to have with my mind, with my finances, right? So when you give God in good measures, he will shake it down. So kind of goes into the story of Elijah, right? When the woman 
when Elijah tells the woman, hey, um, share, right? You let's go ahead and share. And she was, of course, like anybody else, this is the last that I have. And she took a step in faith, not because she had lots, but because she took a step in faith and she gave Elijah the first, right? And then what did God do? He made sure that he multiplied. See, God can multiply what we give, what we have, and we keep that ours. And that's all we can do with it, right? That's what we have. But when we give generously when we give to God he can multiply that he will use that goes into um, the story of, of of when Jesus fed the thousands right um the boy that had the two fish and five loaves of bread he gave that right he gave that and then Jesus multiplied it so that everybody had enough right so um when we give Jesus can multiply when we keep that's all we have right so we have to trust that th that sense right i want i don't know about you guys how many of you guys want multiplication i want god's multiplication i don't want to rely on my math i want to rely on his right so the third mindset you guys is the barn the the barn mindset so when you recognize god's kingdom there's more than enough right but again, like I was saying, sharing with you guys, I was living on that bag mindset that day, right? And I'm like, ah, Lord, let me be basket mindset. Let me give. But then when you realize that God has, there's more than enough in God's kingdom, right? So that's a barn mindset. So that takes us to Proverbs 3, 9 through 10. So honor the Lord with your wealth. And with the best part of everything you produce, then you will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. So we want that overflow. We want to, we all want to live there, right? We all want like, yes, God, give me an abundant amount. Give me an overflow amount. But where is our mindset? Is our mindset in the generosity or is our mindset in poverty? Because poverty tells us you can't give because you're going to need, right? So in order to get to born mindset, you have to work in it and trusting God with all of your finances, with everything that you have, so that you would have that abundance, right? So Jesus was the firstborn. He was the lamb and God gave us his best even though we didn't deserve it. He gave us his best. So it's against our selfish ways, yet it is what we're called. Jesus said, pick up your cross and follow me. It doesn't say pick up your cross and all your belongings and all the things you carry and all the things that, you know, and your Michael Kors purses and your, you know, your Gucci slippers. He doesn't say that. It's just the cross. Pick up the cross and follow me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I know I've seen some of our Santa lists. I'm just kidding you guys, but you know, sometimes I'm a little extra. So I want to live in that barn mindset. I want to live in that barn mindset, but I also want to have that basket mindset that I want to give and I want to give and I want to trust God, but I don't want to give expecting just necessarily God's going to, if I give this 20, that means that if I do God's math, I'm going to end up with a hundred. I want to give because God gives me more, more than enough. He gives me health. He gives me strength. He gives me amazing sisters. He gives me people that he surrounds me with. He gives me my children. He gives me like, it just, when we start realizing the blessings that come in, it's not a number. It's everything that surrounds us, you know, like that we are spending, you know, here we go again, another amazing Christmas, you know, maybe different. But he gives us faith. He gives us hope. He gives us people that pray for us, that battle with us, that when we're feeling a certain way, they're going to come and fight with us, right? So <clears throat> today we're just going to, I'm going to close in prayer. <clears throat> and, um, and, and then just a reminder, take your focus off, the, off of yourself and shift it to Jesus. You know, one day that that happens, it changes everything. And you start realizing, hey, it's back on me and I need to shift it onto Jesus, right? So understanding that um we all go through these things but recognizing them right recognizing that hey am, am i being selfish am i being you know am i not being generous enough is this is god using me 
How am I being available to God in every area? Generous in my time, generous in my finances, generous with listening, right? So we need to pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you, Father God, for this message. I thank you, Lord. And Father God, I pray that you would just open up our hearts, Father, that we would hear your voice, that we'd become generous, Father God, that we would transition our mindsets from the bag mindset, Father God, into the barn, Father, that we would trust you in every step, Father God, that we would hold on to you, Father, and not let go, that our shift and our focus would not be off of you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, that you are a provider, Father. I thank you, Lord, that your math makes more sense than any of ours. And I thank you, Jesus, that you know our needs and you provide, Father God. Lord, and it is in your precious name we pray. Amen.